Um, I can. I don't know if I've gone through the whole. Like move to the middle. No, it's fine. This shows like the. It's fine. Anyways, um, so I think everyone knows what staff they're on, that kind of stuff, because I've set up all the individual group chats. But I'll make like the big announcements and the group me. If you don't have group me, I would download it. I don't really know how it works. Like, it, does anyone in here not have group me? But like, still got added to it. If not, that's fine. But yeah. I didn't have it before I got it. But then you've got it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> but the group meetings where I'll do like the big messages and then your individual chats is where you can talk about like your specific articles, your specific groups, all that kind of stuff. Um, the biggest thing I think right now is just we're going to set up a time to take pictures. Um, that'll probably be an either afternoon or lunch period sometime in the next like two or three weeks. Um, definitely before the first issue comes out. But from there, I'm just going to go ahead and let Miss Wells take it. Okay. Talk to everyone. Yeah. And I'll go back with you. All right. Um, all right, hi guys. Um, if you were here last year on staff, then you probably saw some of this, but um, Katie Beth is really the boss. I'm just here for moral support. Um, but I also did was a sponsor for a school newspaper for many, many years, and I, journalism was my major like the first two years I was in college. So I just wanted to talk real quickly about news writing because it's a totally different beast. Many of you are in AP classes and you're used to AP writing. And news writing is not AP writing, so it's a little different. Um, this is a very, very crash course in news writing and what is news. Um, but essentially, you know, the question, what is news? News is something that is relevant information or new information. It is timely and is important to your community. So you have to ask yourself the question before you even write the article, why is anybody going to care? Why is anybody going to want to read this? And um, a lot of times we have big issues in the news that um, you may want to address. But as a high school paper, you always want to take the local angle. So, you know, be thinking about, okay, well, how does this apply to my school? How does this apply to my school community? Why do we care? And so that's probably the question that should be foremost in your mind when you're thinking about writing and when you're thinking about doing news articles. Um, okay. All right, so the sections of the paper, I'm sure Katie Beth's gone over this with you, but the major big categories are news, features, sports, and editorials, and we'll talk a little bit more about those in a minute. All right, so one of the big deals about writing is when you write a news article is to write a news lead, and you want to write a news lead that not only catches people's attention, but a news lead has to do several things in the very first paragraph. And if you read news articles, you'll notice that a lot of them are very, very short. So you want to address as many of the five W's and one H as you can, who, what, where, when, why, or how, in the first and or second paragraph. Um, because basically people are reading news articles, not because they're necessarily bored and have nothing else to do, but because they want information. And so you are trying to give them that information quickly. Um, think inverted pyramid. The most important facts are going to be at the top. As you get down to the bottom, you get the least important facts. And this is actually goes way back to the old days when they used to do printing presses. And the editor would go and they should be able to chop off like paragraphs at the bottom and not lose anything in your article. So when you write your articles, remember the most important information needs to be at the very top and the least at the bottom. All right, so LTQTQT is a format of writing in the news, um, news organizations. And basically, it's an acronym for lead, quote, transition, quote, transition, quote, transition. And so if you look at a lot of standard news articles, they are written in this manner. You'll have your lead paragraph with the five W's and one H. You'll have a, a transition paragraph, then you'll have a quote, then you'll have another transition. Um, and so that's basically a very simple writing style for news articles. Like I said, news writing is very different from writing an AP research paper. Um, you're not going to get into so much detail. There's going to be a lot more quotes from people. Um, so let me just show you real quickly an article from the Washington Post. I just got this like yesterday off the, I don't know, can you all read that? Yes? Okay. So this is an article about some, earth, or some earthquakes that happened in Spain. So if we look at the first paragraph, several small earthquakes shook the Spanish island of La Palma. Um, we don't necessarily have a who here, and a lot of times in the lead, you may not have one of the things, one of the five W's, but we have a what, so we know that several earthquakes shook um, the Spanish island. We have a where, Spanish island of La Palma. We have a when, towards the sea Tuesday. Um, who, what, where, when, we don't have a who, we said, and 
howl. Um, you kind of have a howl in there, I guess. It caused uh, lava to continue to flow as a new vent blew open on the mountainside. So that is a very concise news lead. It gives you a lot of information in just that one sentence. So that's kind of what you're striving to achieve with news articles. Um, here we have a transition after moving downhill across the island's countryside. Then we get into a quote. Now this is not a direct quote, this is an indirect quote, but officials said a river of lava. Then you get another transition. 6,000 people on La Palma have been evacuated, and then you get a quote from someone, a direct quote. So when you read news articles, a lot of times they'll follow this format. They'll have a lot of quotes in there and a lot of transitions in between. So as much as possible, if you're writing journalistically, you want to try and stick to this kind of formula. Hello. All right, next slide. So I wanted to go through the different types of articles with you so that you have an idea if you don't know what features is, you don't know what editorials is. So features is like human interest stories. Um, they would be things like, you know, if you read a, a magazine and there's an interview with a famous musician, that would be a features piece. Or um, if you have an article in a newspaper about a boy who's raising money for cancer, that would be a features piece. So it's anything that's more like not really newsy in the sense that it has to be put out right away because that's when it's happening, but in the sense that it's like a, a story that appeals to somebody's emotions a little bit more. Um, so it could be things like entertainment, cultural events. With features articles, you don't have to stick necessarily with the lead, with the five W's and the one H. It can be more creative. So if you're a features writer, you have a little bit more leeway to be a little more creative. And so our feature section is North Augusta Left this year, so if you are wondering like, oh, like there's a feature section, if you are a North Augusta Left writer, or on the North Augusta Left team, that is our feature section. We did have a little bit of a problem last year trying to differentiate between features and news, and so that name change just to help us really understand that like features is North Augusta Left, it's what's going on in the North Augusta community, about the entertainment, culture, all of that kind of stuff, whereas news is more school-focused, news, Christian school, um, that kind of stuff. And sometimes you can have some overlap of those two things, too. Like, I was thinking, what would be a really good article would be, like, the psychology of TikTok challenges, just because the school TikTok challenge is going, why are people doing this, you know? And, like, have a, a psychology article and, and interview some kids, you know, maybe even some kids who have done this challenge and, like, why did you do it? Is, you know, do you regret it? That kind of thing. All right. So sports, again, sports is pretty self-explanatory. You cover the local sports events. Um, you can cover national events, but take a local angle on them. Um, like last year when we had a lot of um, athletes that were protesting the Black Lives Matter stuff, um, you could do an article based on that, but take it locally. You know, find out if any players on our football team agree with that or disagree with that. You know, if you want to go there, it's kind of controversial. But you know, take a local angle on wide national events, and that's for any of our articles here. Take a local angle. Um, the lead needs to have the five Ws, but again, it can be a little bit more creative. Um, sports articles tend to be a little bit more catchy. Uh, they really try to catch use some terminology that will draw the readers in. Um, having a knowledge of sports is helpful. I could never be a sports writer because I'd be like, hey, you threw the ball. It was great, you know? <laughs> so you have to have some, some basic working knowledge of sports. Okay. Editorials, again, editorials are opinion pieces. Um, they can be about national or local events. If you have a good editorial, it is based on facts and reason. It is not just, this is my opinion. Um, and, and this is, you know, all I have to say about it is I like it or I don't like it. It has to be factually based. Um, you have to support your opinion in it. Um, you know the background of your subject um, and editorials. I don't know that we ever did letters to the editor. So we actually don't have an editorial section right now. It's something we kind of worked on last year and then the leadership team did decide against creating that section. Um, at least last year, just because we did already have a lot going on with COVID. And it was just going to be a lot to also try and train people to make sure to do opinions in a non-biased way almost. Right. Um, at the very least to make sure it's actually correct. And so this is something we're looking at putting in this year and possibly we won't have an editorial section, but having, you know, if you want to do an extra article that month, you get to write an editorial, that kind of thing. Um, and if we do that, that's probably something we'd get into maybe January. And we would also try and make sure to get y'all some type of, you know, meeting like this again will be really Guide into editorials and like how to do it well. Yes. Because <laughs> I think it's definitely considering we are a North Augusta High School Club, 
Um, we do have much American approval to do this. I think if we get too careless with editorials, we could be shut down. So I really want to be careful with it. Um, but I do think it's something we can explore as we get into this year. Yeah, and editorials, it's important to do things with topics that are important and have some relevance and not just be like, you know, um, I don't know, uh, just something frivolous. But at the same time, there there is a lot of, when you get into the editorial thing, it's very easy to get into trouble, especially if you're dealing with a controversial topic. So whoever does the editorials has to be somebody who is very, like, um, metered and cautious, and it can't just be, you know, this crazy person who has these wild opinions and you go, oh, they, they're very opinionated, let's let them write an article. You know, it, it has to be somebody who has some self-restraint, and you have to remember that this is the buzz, but it's also representing North Vista High School, and, um, you know, you have to keep that in mind as well. So it's, it's kind of a slippery slope with editorials, but if they're done well, they can be really, really, really good and really thought-provoking. So. Definitely something I'm excited for us to go into. Yeah. I'm super careful with it. Um, but it'll be good. Okay, so do we have photographers in here? Yes, okay. Photojournalism is a whole beast in and of itself, okay? Um, a lot of people think, oh, I want to take pictures because that'll be easy. Uh uh. If you are doing it well, photojournalism is not easy. Um, you are telling a whole story in a picture. And so to be able to do that well and to catch people's attention and create an emotion with that picture, is a, it's an art form. So it's something that you have to really practice, that you have to know what you're doing, um, and that it takes a lot of pictures to get that one perfect picture. So you can't be afraid to be click, 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 you know. Um, do not pose your subjects. These are some basic general rules. Uh, you don't want to pose people, you know, you don't want to go in the cafeteria and interview someone and say, okay, now y'all get together in a little picture and we'll often take your picture. You want people to look as natural as possible, um, so not necessarily, and there will be times where you'll have a portrait of someone, but you don't want all the pictures to be people posing, um, so you want a lot of natural type photos as well. Um, good photojournalists look, they're always looking for drama, they're looking for people's expressions, they're looking for different angles, so they're not afraid to lay on the floor and take a picture or climb up on a ladder and shoot down. You know, it's not always straight on at people because sometimes you, to get that angle is, is going to make more of an impact. And um, you also want to focus on, and this is really important, focus on individuals, not groups. A lot of times people will take a picture and they'll take a picture of everyone. Whereas if you really look at individual people's expressions, a lot of times it's way more interesting to focus on the individual instead of a group. But that's not a hard and fast rule. I'm going to show you an example in just a minute of where each one works. It's your judgment, and that's where the art comes in. You know, sometimes you do need the group to make this to make the story of the picture. Sometimes it's better to get the individual. I would say nine times out of ten, you probably want more of an individual focus than a group situation. But again, I'll show you where that doesn't apply. If you are a photojournalist, you have to be assertive. All right, you cannot be a shy person. You cannot stand 50 feet away from the action and take the picture. You have to be right up in there. Y'all know what paparazzi are, right? You are essentially paparazzi. So you have to be not afraid to take the picture, um, not afraid to get in there, uh, not afraid to approach people and ask them you know, their name and can I publish you, this is for the buzz. That's an important thing too. You need to get the names of your subjects, you need to have the correct spelling. Don't just assume how to spell um, Chelsea because there's probably like 50 different ways. So you need to get the correct spelling and get their permission to publish their photo. So here's two examples of photos, and they are both from Black Lives Matter protests back in 2020. You see one example here where we're focused on the individual, and one example here where we're focused more on a group. Can you see why the photographer made each of these choices? Like, why would he not pull back and just show everybody in this situation, in this first photo? It's a deeper feeling. Right, you connect more to this gentleman, you know, he's obviously going through something, and to, if he were to back out and just include everybody, it would really diminish the picture and it would diminish the emotional impact. But here, why don't we just focus on this kid's face? Why are we doing a whole wide group thing? Yeah, because I mean, look, where's the drama? Is it necessarily in his face? The drama is all these people pulling at this one kid. 
So in this case, you want a wide angle photo because of this. Now, I bet the photographer took like 60 or 70 pictures just of this event. I bet he did get some close up of the faces, but this was the one they chose to use. So these were all photographs that I pulled from, I think it was Time Magazine, they had photos of the year from last year. So these are all just some examples of really good photos. And if you are serious about journalism, um, I would recommend that you read articles from established papers like the Washington Post, like the New York Times, um, and that also that you look at photog photographs from places like Time and just see where, what the layout is, what the lighting is like, what the composition of the photograph is. Next. All right, so if you are interviewing your, someone, um, always make sure you introduce yourself, tell them you know, why you're asking them all these questions. Hopefully you do that, because if you didn't, it would be weird. Um, always get the subject's name and the correct spelling. Ask permission if you're going to record them on your phone. And a lot of times people will do this. They'll take their phone and they'll write things down, but they'll also record on their phone. That way you can always go back to the phone, and if you miss something on your paper that you were writing, you can always go back and review that. Um, but ask permission first. And sometimes this, I don't know that this happened last year, did it at all? Every now and then you might have a teacher say, I want to see that before you publish it. Or an administrator say, I want to see that before you publish it. As a journalist, as a budding journalist, um, it is a journalistic principle not to agree to allow subjects to review what it is you're writing. Um, it's because the subject will want to, invariably they'll want to change something that they said, or they'll want to fix something that you wrote. If it's an inaccuracy, you know, then yeah, it probably should be corrected, but you have the right to write your article and publish your article. Once they agree to that interview, they are giving you that right. So you do not have to say, yes, I will let you read the article before it gets published. That's the editor's job to go through and read it. That's my job as sponsor to go through and look at it and make sure that everything is correct and accurate. So, I mean, if someone says something like that to you, you can say, well, my editor and our sponsor, Ms. Wells, will be reviewing the article before it gets published. But you do not have to agree to allow someone to review the article. And a lot of times I would say, you know, don't agree to that because it's, it's a journalistic principle for you not to have to allow someone to review your stuff. Um, come prepared with questions. You obviously want to do your research before you go into that interview. Know who the subject is, know what their background is, know about the topic you're going to be asking them. So have everything ready, but don't be afraid to go off your list. You know, if they say something and you're like, oh, that's interesting, why did they say that? Ask them that question. Don't be like, oh, well, I didn't have that written down, so I can't ask you that. So don't be afraid to go off the cuff, okay? And again, do your homework first. Know who the best person is to interview. This always drives me nuts. If you guys watch the local news channels, um, like WJDF and stuff, I hope nobody here has parents that work over the local news channels. You know? Because a lot of times they'll be like, you know, and that, now the city council has agreed to a tax increase about blah, blah, blah. And they'll cut to a guy at a gas station pumping gas. And they'll be like, what do you think about that? And it's like, why wouldn't you ask somebody on the city council, ask somebody who you know, really has an opinion that is educated and relevant rather than just guy on the street. So when you are doing your interviews, ask yourself, is this the really best person that I could be asking this question of? Sometimes the guy on the street is the person that you want to ask, but a lot of times it's not. So again, know who the best person and know about your subject. And I think that's it. Yes. I tried to go quick. Thank you so much for coming, Neil. Um, also, um, so my name is Sean Living. So Sean is our website management team leader, um, and then a lot of our other leaders are not here today. They have lots of things going, but Annalise is here. Um, I was not going to need to worry. Um, so we have, so I'm the editor in chief. Um, so I'm just kind of editor. And then Career Morley is the editor in chief in training. So when I graduate, she's taking all this over. She is not here today. She's at junior advisory and volleyball. But that will be her next year, so she'll be working with me to get all of that done. And then we have like our three slash four section editors. Um, so Annalise is sports. If you're on the sports team, we'll be working with her. If you're already in a group chat with her, so you can talk to her and all that. Um, our news team, I think it's Catherine. Um, I don't really know where she is today, but she, I know she has something going on. Um, so Catherine Newman is our news team editor. And then our North Augusta life is Drew Pond. He has swim meet today. Um, Sean just left for cross country, but he is website management. 
And then I do believe, so photography currently does not have a team leader, but I was working with Andrew Towner to see if he would work with y'all a little bit to kind of step up as a leader. Um, if not, I know for my people last year, I kind of worked with y'all and love that. So that might change. Um, and I'll get in contact with individual groups about specific things, like photography, I think we might work on like assigning y'all to specific sections, um, just so it's easier for y'all. And like my newer people, you might kind of float around, but like, you know, Anne-Marie and Emma, y'all were here last year, you'll probably get assigned a specific section and stick with that, and then have some newer people help you out when you need it. Um, but as for that, I think that's pretty much everything, unless Annalise, you have anything like to address with your section. Um, I'm super excited to get started this year. It's gonna be great. All my new people, it's gonna be a fun time. We usually have a lot going on, um, but it's also really chill. We do try to work with you a lot. Yes. I have a question. Um, are we doing the team pictures like we did last year? Yes, we are. And I'm hoping to do that sometime in the next like two or three weeks, definitely before we publish the first issue. I think we're doing that. I'll have to check my calendar, but I'm pretty sure it's gonna be the second Monday of October. Because um, we did do this meeting a week later than I wanted to. I want to say we're publishing on, okay, I think it's the 18th of October is the current plan um, of publishing, which will be great. That'll be our first edition of the year, and we'll try and get those done before that. Usually we do that at school, um, sometimes in the hallway if it's a sunny day outside, maybe outside. Um, but the general rules for that, girls just like, or everyone, honestly, just like a black top. You can wear a dress, you can wear a black top and jeans, whatever, but just like black top, try and look relatively nice. Um, but you don't have to be like, super fancy or anything. And the purpose of those pictures is when you publish an article, there's a name to go with the face yes. of like the yes. writer. We also have a meet the team page, so if you go to our website, you can see the one from last year. We're probably going to do it a little bit differently the way it set up last year. It's kind of like outlined to people. We're probably going to upload the whole picture. Um, but this is what people will know you as, as whether like photography will be there, um, our writers will be there, everyone is going to have their own picture. Um, so it's super important we also do team pictures and that's what I put on the social media to introduce everyone every year and so it's going to be really important that we get those pictures. Um, look however you want to for them but most people tend to want to look nicer just because it is going to go on the website and that is going to be what represents you for the rest of the year. Um, and but, follow dress code. Please. Yes, follow dress code. <laughs> <laughs> but I do think that's something we're taking probably after school or if we have to during our lunch period. Um, and for my photographers as well, we do have a school camera that we can use. Um, or if you have your own personal camera, you can use that. You can also use your phone, but if you're wanting to use that school camera, we have it. Just check with Ms. Wells, and you can check it out from her. But that is everything I have for you all today. So thank you so much for coming. I appreciate it. If you have any questions, let me know. Text me. Text me in the group me. Appreciate it. Y'all have a great day. Um, start um, sending like, article ideas.